Aerial refueling is tough, but the US Air Force is making it even more difficult with its new aerial tanker joining the fleet. The unhappy boom operators want the tip of their booms back, but the reason is not what you think. Aerial refueling can be compared to sticking a thread into a needle in front of a fan. And if that's not tricky enough, try doing it blindfolded, because that's exactly what the boom operators on these new fuel tankers have to deal with at times. This multi-billion dollar over-engineering failure, or shall I say under-engineering, depending on how you look at it, started with a big boom. There are two ways to do aerial refueling, the flying boom method and the probe and drogue method. The flying boom method consists of an aerial tanker fitted with a rigid telescopic tube or boom, which terminates with a fuel nozzle. The receiver aircraft flies in a fixed position behind the tanker aircraft. Some say approaching the tanker is the most dangerous part. Lining up in three-dimensional space while matching up the speed is not that easy, and that's not even considering the turbulence that both aircraft create. The larger the receiving aircraft, the more dangerous it is. But once both airplanes are lined up, the boom operator can move the boom side to side or up and down using a joystick that controls the V-shaped airfoil. The boom operator sits or lies down at the rear of the tanker while looking through the window as they operate the boom. This is a highly skilled job, although boom operators could be as young as 18 years old. This method is primarily used by the US Air Force because it can transfer fuel at very high rates, which is beneficial for refueling larger airplanes such as B-52s and larger cargo planes which can fly for extended periods of time. In contrast, the probe and drogue method is primarily used by the US Navy. That's because a tanker equipped with the boom is just too big to operate from an aircraft carrier. In the drogue method, the tanker aircraft releases a flexible hose which terminates in a conical-shaped drogue that trails behind it. The purpose of the drogue is to stabilize the hose and to act as a funnel for the probe. The receiver aircraft is fitted with a probe protruding from the nose of the plane, terminating in a nozzle. The pilot of the receiver aircraft brings the aircraft into position and carefully maneuvers the probe into the drogue. This establishes contact and the fueling begins. The biggest benefit of the probe and drogue is its relative simplicity and the ability to refuel multiple aircraft at once, which is why NATO members also use this method. Additionally, drogue-equipped body pods can be attached to non-tanker aircraft like FA-18s, which turns them into tankers. I know, full-time fighter, part-time tanker, like most Uber drivers, doing it as a side job. Coming up next, it's like an Air Force, but for hair. A hair force, if you will. Did you know that two out of three men will experience hair loss by the time they're 35? And it applies to men who watch our videos too. Which is why this video is sponsored by Keeps, helping men keep their hair. Now let me be clear, if you already look something like this, I think you still look pretty good. But Keeps isn't for you. But if you're looking to prevent hair loss and stimulate hair growth, Keeps has you covered with their clinically proven personalized treatment and one year of unlimited messaging with your prescribing doctor. Keeps is a subscription service, so your treatment will be shipped straight to your door and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. With their network of personnel from expert medical advisors to care specialists, Keeps will support you in making your hair goals come true. And now Keeps has a special offer for Not What You Think viewers. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash nwyt or click the link in the description. That's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash nwyt. Hair loss stops with keeps. The United States currently has 456 operational tankers, majority of which are boomers. And I'm not referring to the refueling system. I'm talking about their age, which averages around 60 years old. Of those 456 tankers, 398 are KC-135s produced from the mid-1950s to mid-1960s, and the remaining 58 are the newer KC-10 model, produced in the 1980s. Both models of tankers are old and expensive to operate and maintain, one of the reasons being shortage of aircraft parts as they're no longer produced. To combat the parts shortage, the US Air Force's newest aerial tanker, the KC-46 Pegasus, dubbed Peggy, is based on the Boeing 767 airframe, 
so there will be no shortage of parts for the foreseeable future. Here comes the confusing part. The fleet of KC-135s are 60 to 70 years old. KC-10s are about 40 years old. Which fleet should get replaced by the modern KC-46 Pegasus? Obviously, it's the KC-10s that have to go. Let me explain. See, it's not all about age, but also about the maintenance complexity. It is very expensive to maintain two different fleets of older airframes, each requiring their own parts and maintenance schedules. Because there is almost seven times as many KC-135s as there are KC-10s, by eliminating the much smaller fleet of KC-10s, an entire maintenance ecosystem for that airframe goes away, which significantly reduces costs. Now, some of the oldest KC-135s will also have to go, but the early retirement of the entire fleet of KC-10s means that KC-135s will stay in service at least until they are in their 80s. Now that's a wholesome life. The KC-46 Aerial Refueling and Strategic Transport Aircraft was developed from the Boeing KC-767 Aerial Refueling Tanker that was cancelled in 2003 because of corruption allegations due to a leasing scheme. It ultimately resulted in the jailing of a procurement executive. Since 2013, out of the 179 tankers ordered, 56 have been built to date. Peggy has two wing refueling pods at each wingtip as well as a centerline drogue system under the rear fuselage. Peggy also has a refueling boom. But the flying boom and the drogue are at best partially operational. In other words, they cannot be reliably used for refueling compared to the older KC-135s and KC-10s. You see, Peggy is plagued with problems. Major problems. According to the Government Accountability Office, Peggy has seven critical deficiencies that could cause death, severe injury or illness, or otherwise cause loss or damage to the aircraft. But let's focus on the most critical problem. KC-46 uses Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS, the same one used on Boeing 737 MAX, which resulted in two deadly crashes and the worldwide grounding of the entire 737 MAX fleet for over a year and a half. But for Peggy, the biggest problem wasn't MCAS. It was the lack of windows. No, not that windows. These windows. KC-46 has one major design change. Instead of sitting at the back of the aircraft and looking through a window while maneuvering the boom, the operator sits in a remote station in front of the aircraft and looks at a screen. And it's been challenging to perfect this remote vision system or RVS. You'd think the camera technology would be pretty good in this day and age, but that proved to not be the case as RVS was being developed and tested. Under certain atmospheric conditions, like certain sun angles and its reflection off the water, the cameras would wash out or black out for periods of time. On multiple occasions, boom operators were unable to see the receptacle in the receiving aircraft. At times, boom operators couldn't even differentiate between the tip of the boom and the receiver aircraft. This lack of visual clarity has on occasion resulted in undetected contact with the receiver aircraft and even damage to the receiver aircraft's body coatings. No wonder the Air Force doesn't yet feel comfortable refueling its F-35s and F-22s with the KC-46 Pegasus because the wonky boom system could scratch the stealthy coatings on these expensive fighters, and that would be just plain wrong. Copy. Additionally, Peggy cannot refuel A-10 Warthogs because of the stiff boom deficiency, and unfortunately, there is no pill for that. The issue is that A-10s have a difficult time disconnecting after refueling, since they're lighter and slower aircraft. As of May 26, 2021, KC-46 is only able to refuel F-A-18s without restriction using its drogue system. The original RVS version 1.0 includes two regular vision cameras and two infrared cameras for night refueling. But it seems like Boeing forgot the most basic thing that all modern cameras have, an exposure compensation control dial. Another point of frustration is that the screen is black and white. Yeah, black and white video feed. Boeing is currently developing a new system which will use ultra-high definition cameras and 4K screens connected with fiber optic cables to reduce latency. 
More importantly, the displays will be upgraded from black and white to color. Makes you wonder why they didn't do that from the start. The RVS 2.0 is due in 2023 or 2024. But in the meantime, the RVS relies on Software Fix 1.5, a short-term solution that mitigates the problem until the new hardware arrives. The boom operators describe the current system as a black and white piece of technology, or in politically correct terms, they find it hard to use. So the RVS is bad, and it appears that some boom operators want the legacy systems back. Their biggest complaint is the lack of depth perception. This problem is going to be addressed in RVS 2.0 with the addition of a laser rangefinder that will show the accurate distance from the tip of the boom to the receptacle. But the operators also miss seeing the tip of their boom. The camera feed doesn't show the tip, which in my opinion is the best part to look at. But for some reason, a foot and a half of it is missing from the video feed, which means boom operators with no windows now have to rely on shadows. If there's no shadow on a cloudy day, they rely on experience and guesswork rather than technology. According to the operators, the current RVS works best at night. And that's simply due to lack of glare. The good news is that Boeing is developing RVS 2.0 on their own dime. I mean, it's their own mess. The KC-46 Pegasus program is in fact losing money for Boeing, having lost $5.4 billion on the jet to date. Peggy was supposed to be a next-generation aerial tanker that would offer better mission planning, more advanced data sharing, and better protection against electromagnetic pulses. It was supposed to be ready for action, but the 56 tankers built so far are not yet fully operational. This raises the question, why would they throw away something that works? Something as simple as a window in favor of a remote vision system. The answer appears to be that the RVS is a transition step to a fully automated refueling system, ultimately eliminating the need for a boom operator. All that needs to happen is to translate the geometric data of the aerial refueling process into algorithms which will allow a computer to do the refueling job on its own. In fact, Boeing already developed a refueling drone, the MQ-25, which is capable of refueling fighter jets automatically. According to Boeing, in the future autonomous refueling, the computer will fly the tanker and air refuel the receiving plane all by itself. Meanwhile, the Air Force agrees, citing that if something could be automated and become uncrewed, it should. The automated aerial refueling program started back in 2004 with the first successful test conducted in 2007 by DARPA with help from NASA. In 2020, the Air Force submitted a proposal to Boeing to develop autonomy algorithms and install them on KC-46 tankers at a cost of up to $55 million but only after Boeing finishes RVS 2.0. But is this remote vision system an over-engineered blunder, or did Boeing make the mistake of under-engineering it? And if automated aerial refueling is the future, was RVS really a necessary step, especially if you could transition from looking through windows to an automated system in one go? Let us know what you think of robots taking over the skies.